Welcome to this special episode of the Divine Woman Awakening podcast. We got back from Greece and I invited some of the beautiful women to share a little bit about their experiences, the ceremonies, what was special, what stood out for them and what they really felt they came home with. This is just giving you a sneak into the window of the experience of what happens on these retreats when we all come together with that intention of love and awakening and transformation and healing and letting go of what no longer serves us. So my loves, join me and some of these beautiful women that were on the journey. So here we go. We're going to go around and just kind of share our experiences. And the first question that I would love to deep dive into is, if you would like to share with us um, about your experience, um, maybe one of your felt like your favorite or most powerful experiences. And Robin, we'll go with we'll go with you to first of all, love. If you'd like to share, and I know you were like, I can't pick one. I could pick one on every day. <laughs> yeah, that is absolutely correct. Um, I have. Uh, it was very powerful, even on the very first day when we went to Delphi. You know, I've been doing this a while now and and with you and you know that I've had some physical challenges as well as my spiritual growth. And I just really felt that expansion piece in my as I'm as I'm expanding spiritually, I'm also getting stronger physically. And so to be able to go up to the top of Delphi and be up there and overlook the you know see the the GNC and be up there and know and like feel so empowered in myself and in my body both spiritually and physically when I sat up there I can't like the spiritual experience I had was very profound like I felt it on a cellular level aside from that before that even happened when we were at the spring and we were you know with the water and in the spring and um you know, the pictures and the videos that were taken, we we all know afterwards there was a very special thing that happened with those videos that really just kind of impacted me so much on how much I'm supported with my spirit team and with the gods and goddesses and, and all of it. You know, it was just a really, really magical moment. So that really stands out. And that was day one. So, and it just gets better from there. <laughs> Then I would have to say um, the last day on the boat. Um, <laughs> we all know that was a very, very, very magical and powerful. And um, that just really solidified and shifted a lot within me um, in my expansion and my connection. You know, the light codes that came in, um, the connection that I have now that even upon being home, other people feel that in me everyone's kind of looking at me like, what's different, you know, or I'll grab somebody's hand and it's like, they're like, wow, there's a difference. I feel it and other people feel it. And so um, that last day was just, you know, from bookending the trip, there was a lot of magic that happened in between, but that first day and that last day were very, very powerful. Mm, that is so amazing. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. I know you want to share every day in between as well. I know. <laughs> I don't want to say oh. everything. <laughs> oh, thank you for sharing that love. And maybe Lisa, you could share next. Thank you. Um, yes, every day had something so special. I felt like it was a bookend right from the first day to the last day. Um, but I think I'm going to talk about the day at the Acropolis, like after when we went into like just randomly walked off to the side and there was like trees, you know, and we did, it was Stephanie's birthday day and the crowning. Um, I felt like that day was super special for me personally, because I felt like being the observer role and just witnessing gave a whole new meaning to the word witness for me and witnessing all of the women and just Amanda and just that was the day where like all of the sun codes were coming in for me. It was just like so beautiful. I couldn't even take it all in. It was just, you know, totally, it totally changed for me at that point. I felt like every single day had something so special from the rituals to just, you know, physical world planning, you know, how everything just lined up. But that day I felt like all the, the the knowing and the seeing and that was the day I rebirthed everybody 
<laughs> when they were babies. <laughs> and I was just like, you know, touching their hearts. And then I played with each of you when you were like eight years old and brushing your hair. And I saw you all at eight years old and, you know, doing little fun things, you know, and we were, and it was like all my little children at eight years old played with each other. <laughs> it was amazing. I mean, it was, I mean, I was bawling and it was just, it really, my heart exploded that day. And I have never felt my heart in this lifetime open and explode like that. So that was, that was my, one of the top days for me. Thank you, love. And I love that you did that rebirth thing. And just, you know, it's like that expanded heart, that expanded consciousness. It's like, it, it never, it never goes back. It's just, it just keeps expanding from there. So thank you for sharing that. That's so beautiful. Heather, would you like to share next, love? Yes, I would be honored to. There were several, like like Robin said, every day was impactful. And my most profound day was, um, one of them was at the beginning of the week. And it was when we were at the little auditorium, the little flatland. Was that in Delphi as well? Yeah, Delphi. Okay. Yeah. yeah, Delphi, excuse me. And you were doing a healing on me. And one of the ways that, because I've been to um, Ireland with Amanda twice before. So I've worked with Amanda before. And so she knows that I can let out these really powerful, deep dreams. And I remember when you were doing a healing on me, they kept coming and coming. And I mean, I could have just gone on and on and on. and. I was able to not only channel my pain and my rage from all the trauma that I have had in this lifetime, I was also releasing what my ancestors have been through. And I was also on this particular occasion and in this trip was able to channel all of your rage and anger and trauma. And I knew that I was like pulling it out of you into me so I could release it out into the universe and so we could be healed and because some of the things that I said were not things that had happened to me but I knew that they had happened to some of my sisters and I was taking back our power as a woman and I was taking back all of our love and healing what was hurting so bad in each one of us and there was one time when I was bending over and Amanda was like kind of here in front of me and then Jose was behind me and I felt this buzz in my head, almost like I had been injected with some type of drug. And I remember thinking I wanted to go, oh my gosh, guys, oh my gosh, you've got to feel what I'm feeling. But I didn't want, you know, to say that. And this warmth came over me and I think it scared me a little bit and it was probably maybe like 10 seconds and then it left. But whatever that was, it was so profound. It has stuck with me this whole time. And it was some type of healing that both of you were giving me and that I was receiving. And it was so powerful. I can't even really articulate it. That's the best way that I can put it is it felt like a drug. And it felt so good. Whatever it was, it was love and, and acceptance and just all the good things, all the good things. So it was just, that was like my aha moment for the whole trip. Mm, that is amazing. Thank you for sharing that. And I love that you really did hold that space of helping everybody. Like, and just listening to you all, it's like the unconditional love, Lisa with the rebirth thing, the inner child work, you with channeling that pain and you know, for everyone collectively, like every woman, every human, right? That has experienced that. And then just the love and the support and of all your sisters and these sacred lands, these sacred sites and channeling the energy from above and below and all directions like the ancestors. So thank you, Heather. That's beautiful. Jose, would you like to share next love? Oh, well, for me, it's very clear, the most memorable one. And that was on the boat. I mean, like when I tell people here, like, tell me about your experience. I'm like, okay. So the best way I can describe this was we were literally doing like witchcraft, but like the good witches, right? 
like with the incantations and then all the energy rushing through my body and what was cool is everyone had a, like a different experience and was what was even more validating is we were so into it right into the moment and but some people were aware enough <laughs> to kind of look around and do you remember Amanda when we turned around and we saw like we had an actual audience of people <laughs> how could I forget love boatloads <laughs> like we were all like doing our thing then we turn around and then we start laughing like crazy because we realize what's happening <laughs> but basically what I felt was like so cool is that the audience including the men working on our boat at first are like what is going on here and then by the end of it they're all Oh, like they were all feeling the energy and I find this so like super special for people that were they didn't ask for that they're they're probably not you know into that kind of stuff but they all felt it so I'm like man this stuff is it it's powerful and so for me what I came home with was just the sense of empowerment, which is a huge deal. Like just feeling more like I've got power, baby. <laughs> so, and I, I also say to everyone, like, so how was Greece? I'm like, experience of a lifetime. Like one of the best experiences I've ever had. So that thank you for that, Amanda. And thank you, my soul sisters, for making it what it was. I just like, I, I still, I will always carry it with me, this experience. Oh my gosh, thank you, love. And, and it's like bringing it all back so alive, how you're all describing and bringing us into that energy. And Jose, like, <clears throat> that was so incredible because we were just all in this deep ceremony and, and doing the work. And we had done all the clearing work in order to get to that place, so to do that deep work. And here we are in deeper. And then we look and there's these huge boats, right? But what was so amazing is how then, as you described, they started coming into that flow and into that, like they stepped into the energy and they received as well. So it just really shows how this work has such a, a ripple effect. So thank you for sharing love. Thank you. Thank you. So nice to see you all. <laughs> <laughs> oh so beautiful and of course there's other beautiful sisters that were there with us as well and um, that would love to be sharing too and, and maybe we'll do an, another one too but Alicia would you like to share with us too love I would absolutely love to thank you um my most memorable favorite experience I think um it's hard to pick but I think in the cave and it was towards the very beginning but feeling like my uterus and all, you know, I have my five beautiful children, but what my uterus was carrying was so much anger and rage in lifetimes. And it wasn't mine, but I felt that I birthed it in that cave. And I just felt that releasing it into the cave had the opportunity for so much more unconditional love for me to share and feel like through my entire being and my body. And up until then, I've never experienced it. And I knew like going to Greece would be life changing, but I had no idea how much. And that experience was life changing and just loving my, you know, uterus now and not being so inflamed and angry. It's literally, it's different. It's just, it's beautiful. And it was so special and so sacred and unforgettable. I'll never forget it. And like Jose said, like trip of a lifetime, such a beautiful experience that I'll never forget. Thank you all. Thank you. Mm, thank you for sharing my love. Thank you. Thank you. That's like so powerful. So thank you, my love. Okay. So that, that brings us to our, our second question. I mean, I know we could be chatting here all day as well, right? <laughs> Out of all the ceremonies and rituals that we did, was there a specific ritual that we did that really felt like impactful and really stood out for you, love? I'm going to, I'm going to go with what Alicia about the cave you know, just when we started out with the chanting, you know, I love the chants and just really being able to, to do that. And that, that ritual piece of, um, 
you know, you cleared our energy and, and, you know, we collectively then kind of came together and then we paired up and we worked with each other a little bit. And then we kind of went back out into our own space again. And it was, that was just so empowering that, um, again, the chanting and the, and the music and, you know, things happened in that cave and that I would never have believed that I would have been participating in. Um, <laughs> But it was so beautiful. Yeah, I think you do need to do the great reveal. You can't leave everyone on a, on a cliffhanger like that. <laughs> do you want me to tell people what we yes, did? Absolutely. So we got naked <laughs> and we danced. And I actually laid down in the clay and I like let my body just really kind of meld into Mother Earth. And it was just so incredibly beautiful. And I do want to actually kind of um preempt that with that the the photo session that I had with Monique our photographer a few days earlier was really impactful for me in that way I don't think that I would have been as comfortable as I was you know in the cave Monique just has this beautiful way of um like you said Amanda she's a healer as well with the camera and um and she took some very beautiful photography throughout the entire thing that you know like on that last day when we were on the boat not to sidetrack here but I have a beautiful picture of Lisa just holding me after my whole experience and just being held by her and you know that nurturing mother that she (laughs) she was to us you know I have getting goosebumps now because there's so many things that happen and you think you're going to remember them all. And you kind of don't because you're just so in the moment. And so to be captured, uh, and let me just reiterate and say, there are no naked pictures of anybody in the cave. <laughs> in case anybody's wondering, Monique is very um, good at, at capturing the right moments. But anyway, you know, going back into the cave, it was just so incredibly powerful to, that's when I really felt that connection with Mother Earth. And it was that kind of that ritual ceremony that took me into that. And I was just really so present and being able to, even though there was a lot going on around me, I was with myself on the floor of the cave, naked. (laughs) It was beautiful. (laughs) Thank you for sharing that. It was so beautiful. And just, I mean, everyone was just exquisitely breathtakingly beautiful and it was just we were all held by the mother and each other and the goddess so Mm -hmm. thank you love thank you for sharing that (laughs) (laughs) alicia would you like to share next love on um maybe a ritual or ceremony that really stood out to you i'll keep it very short first was in the cave and the singing and the chant like i had never heard myself sing and so i felt like it was through me that this voice was was beautiful and i was like I told Lisa later, I was like, I was singing. I'm like, was that really me? It was just so powerful and so special. And now I play those songs and hear them all the time. And I remember that. And the other little piece was on the boat in that sacred ceremony. And everybody had a part. And I had the beautiful honor of playing the singing bowl. And I just felt, I've never played one in my life. I was like, I know what to do. I just, this is what I do. And it just, the sound. And so to me, it was the singing. And then it was the musical vibrations in the sound bowl that was just so those part of the ceremonies that was just so powerful and so beautiful and so special and so sacred. So thank you for those beautiful opportunities to experience it in our circle and with the soul sisters and everyone. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And thank you for coming with your beauty and your voice and and playing the bowl so beautifully for us. And I love that, that little uh, shot of you with Sophia and teach her how to play the bowl. That was really beautiful. So thank you, love. Lisa, would you like to share with us next, love? Yeah. So I don't, I, like, again, every single day had its own ritual, right? From the beginning, the first night when we all got there at the hotel and you gifted us with our little statues, right? And I have Hera and I was like, I don't know who Hera is, but of course she's like, you know, the goddess of like marriage and children, <laughs> <laughs> um, which I was like, oh yeah, because I have four children as well, right? And I'm like, but everything changed from that trip, my view, perspective, and everything. But back to the rituals, it all started like, you know, just the offering to the land, right? I'm like, yeah, this is great. This is what, yeah, I know how to do this. The music has been so important to me. I listen to it every single day. I can 
feel your guys' hands as we held them. I remember every single sacred circle that we had from the, the side of the road, <laughs> having tea at the gas station, you know, to, you know, in the cave and the singing as well. I'll sing by myself all the time. But for me to sing out loud in front of people, I feel like every day, like I was fully aware of every fear that I had every single day. And in the beginning, I was still kind of like teeter tottering on it. When Miranda looks you in the eyes, you better look her in the eyes. Like I think I closed my eyes like like as if I could hide from her. <laughs> I was like, she was like, keep her eyes open. I was like, okay. <laughs> but to look at her and sing with her and to her and with her was so powerful for me and my voice. So doing the ritual in the cave and then, gosh, you know, the, uh, the Acropolis and then and Delphi and then the boat, I think each one led up to uh, so much more power. And I feel like, you know, Amanda, you, your presence and I feel like you were um, always flanked yourself with support, which I totally appreciate. And I feel like you kind of like handed some things over to us by the time we were on the boat, right? Like you kind of came up to each of us and said, Hey, are you comfortable with, you know, bringing this energy? And we're like, yeah, I mean, each fear, right. It was all about like saying yes. And that's the courage part. And I felt like on the boat, that was an experience of a lifetime with everyone. So powerful, not only of where we were at that point near the hot springs and having an audience, but with each one of us bringing that's that was the trip. Yes, being in Greece was like we, I, you know, I don't, I, but I'm pretty sure we could do it just like you know in Lake Erie, <laughs> you know, <laughs> from all of us and what and what we were contributing. But I think the the boat was definitely life changing. So thank you, thank you to all of you. It was amazing. I know, and Robin, when I was with you, I mean, I was just like felt like I was really mothering you and caring for you, you know. I know you were exhausted and then I was exhausted and then Carmen came to me and consoled me. I felt like it was just a trickle effect of everybody just supporting and caring and loving each one of us individually. Oh my gosh, that is just like you brought us right there again, brought us right in. So thank you for that and articulated this just when you're held with unconditional love, which everybody was doing and just this like the held of the mother, the divine mother, the earth mother and all of your sisters. And I've seen that picture where you're just holding Robin. <laughs> it's just, oh, I just loved her. I just, it, you know, it's just, you just know what to do. You just know. Mm-hmm. And I just felt so privileged every day, every moment I felt so cared for, so loved, so supported. You know, the first night I was like, how am I going to remember everybody's names? Oh, I will never forget anybody's name ever. <laughs> like those, these are my sisters. I love you guys all so, so much. And we all had such a special time I feel with each you know individually along with you too Amanda I think I think we all connected on an individual and as a group deeply oh absolutely yeah it's it's like connections that are there for life now you know I love that love that thank you thank you all for just being who you are and bringing that presence of love and acceptance and healing and transformation because you all were part of that transformation that you all had for each other you know so Heather, would you like to share next? Yes, hands cave for me as well. And um, to front load, I would like to let everyone know, as my sisters already know. So I need bilateral knee replacement. And I knew that going on the trip. Um, Amanda knew that. She prepared everything for me. I got driven up to the site as close as we can. And so the spiritual meaning of knee pain is fear of moving forward which really fits a lot of things in my life. Even though I have bone on bone and I can't reverse that, there's still a spiritual meaning for that. And so we were in a walk down this cave and I looked down and I was like, uh-uh, I'm going in there. And I think it was several of you and especially Alicia. Alicia was like, I'll be with you, I'll go. And our driver, Pan, who was a lovely man, a beautiful blend of the divine feminine and the divine masculine, he was our protector. He sat outside the cave when we were naked and made sure no one came in. Very respectful, very respectful of women. You could just feel it was nice to be around a man that exuded that. And we felt safe. We felt safe within ourselves and together. 
but it was nice to have a man outside watching and protecting us as well. So getting ready to go down the cave, I didn't want to go. And to me, it had, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but on the outside, I noticed, I felt like I was being pushed back. Like, and I also, there was an odor and it didn't smell very pleasant to me. And I was like, I'm not going in there. I can't go in there. I can't. And then, you know, I was like, wait a minute, what are you here for? You are going to go in that cave. And Alicia and Pan went on each side of me with my stick. And I walked down to that cave and I was bawling, bawling uncontrollably. It was fear. It wasn't really pain because I wasn't really hurting at the time. But it was all that fear and all that resentment that I had for my body and anger and all of the emotions were just coming out. And by the time I got down and found the rock to sit on, I was just like, <sighs> but then I was like, oh my gosh, I did it. And I am a nurse and to let everyone know, and there's a reason I'm telling that, it was nice for once to take my nursing hat off and to let someone care for me. Because I always do the caring. I always do the assisting. I always do the lifting. And I felt safe enough with my sisters and my sister, especially Alicia. I will be forever grateful to you. Very patient with me, step by step. And Alicia, I don't think you'll care if I say Alicia's a nurse too. So she still had her hat on a little bit. But to be so loved and there was no shame in that cave. But I felt like the cave was beckoning to us to share, tell me your secrets, tell me your pain. And I remember Amanda said, the cave will not let us leave until it's time. And we all knew when it was time. And there was a period where, um, you know, we were all healing each other and we were sharing. I think Lisa and Jose and I shared some very deep secrets with each other. And it was very comforting to share those secrets and to say those things and not feel judged just to feel loved and supported i'm not going to share those things because they're very sacred and very deep but i appreciate both of you doing that and hearing me and seeing me i felt seen and i felt like nobody gave a shit what my body looked like they just loved me for me and saw like my spirit and i feel like that's the way we all are with each other and like Lisa said, I love every one of these ladies very dearly and would do anything for them. And we got close like that. We only had a week, but the friendships that you cultivate in a retreat like this is just beyond anything that you can imagine in your wildest dreams. And I am so grateful for this. And I'm so grateful that I did this trip because I proved to myself I can do anything I want, knees or not. So that's what was very profound for me out of everything was mm -hmm. the cake. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that again. Like you're all just taking us right there. And I love that. You can do anything you want. Ah, <sighs> just taking that, just taking that in, like it just went right into my heart. So, and you're speaking for all of us. So thank you, my love. And thank you for sharing that and just the deep sistership and the space holding and the love. So thank you. And Jose, would you like to share your favorite ceremony ritual? My gosh, just because, I mean, that every single day had something to bring, powerful, different. But just because I had such a powerful experience, experience on the boat, I would say like, and just to see you in action, like you were like off the roof there. <laughs> like you, I mean, that was impressive. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I'm like, one little woman like this can like ask all these goddesses to come in and they listen. <laughs> and she's like doing it like, Feeling it in your whole body, like I don't know. To me, that was super impressive. And how we experienced it too. That one stood out more for me. The cave, I mean, like everyone, a, a few people said, like the, the singing was like very impactful. And I realized how healing that is. 
So that's something I took away from that. Uh, and besides the fact that, you know, uh, how, oh my gosh, how beautiful you all are. So just admiring the beauty of the feminine body. Thank you, my love. And, you know, I, I would just love to say that everyone, including you, I mean, you were a large part of the healing all throughout from Delphi, you know, doing this beautiful work as even Heather was sharing, you know, and also everybody on the boat had that beautiful healing energy moving through every single one. And it was like collectively everybody coming together that created that. So thank you, my love. Thank you for being there and bringing your beautiful energy and and everyone like it was just so, so incredible. So I feel like our last question would be, and Robin, if you'd like to go first on this, what do you feel like you have brought home with you? Like, how do you feel shifts internally? And maybe how has that happened externally? Yeah, um, there's been a lot of shifts and a lot of coming home with me. Um, and I would say most powerfully, just the the energy and the power of all the sisters. You know, I didn't come home as just me. I brought the energy of everybody else. Like you said, it was just, just this huge collectiveness that, you know, you'll never, ever forget that. I did go to the retreat with the intention of connecting with dragon energy. And so I most definitely brought that home with me <laughs> in many, many ways. And that has impacted just even my day-to-day stuff. You know, I feel very different and like I shared earlier, there's a lot of people that that notice me very differently. I would say that I pretty much had lived my life in divine flow, but I really feel divine flow now. Like I just know that things are going to work out the way that they're supposed to. Like I don't have the stress in my life and I don't have any fret or fear or worry. Like I know there is something bigger than us. And I know that if my mind is in the right place, it's all going to not only be beautiful and work in the flow, it's going to be even beyond what I can imagine for myself. So I know sometimes there's like, well, did you, do you have any expectations? And I find that if I put an expectation on something, I'm limiting what can possibly happen. Right? So I go more now with intention of possibility and what's going to happen for me. And, and this trip, you know, that definitely happened, which is why like, we got home and and I know that some of you know that I'm going on the next one to Ireland because like on a cellular level, I am being, there is this soul calling for me to go there. I need to go because I just feel so impacted by what happened um, by the relationships. And some of us have even gotten together since Greece, you know, in California, which was so magical where we also connected with some of our sisters from from an earlier um, experience that we had. And so it's just the, you know, what you bring home from these things is, is not only your own personal experiences, but, but the relationships, you know, I, I, I think everybody has shared at some point on this podcast, the connections that we made with these women. And I've, I've spoken with several of you guys since we got back and that was only like two weeks ago. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, it's just just incredibly powerful. And I feel empowered. Like that truly is what I have brought home with me is even more empowerment that I already felt in myself as a woman and as a, as a, a, a priestess and a, a healer. So thank you, Amanda. Mm, thank you, love. Thank you for sharing that. It's like that cup is overflowing like abundantly. So <laughs> Thank you, love. So Lisa, would you like to share now what you feel that you brought home with you? Yeah, um, a lot. Um, went to went to Greece with just an all knowing, um, with the original plans of always going to Ireland, which I am going to Ireland. <laughs> like the soul, I know. I was like, I ha- I just have to go. I can't explain it. I'm just going. <laughs> um, but I think what I brought back was not only the empowerment, which I, gosh, I felt like I never felt that up until then. Bringing that home, a deeper knowing just of like life purpose, you know, path. I, I always say I, I'm, I don't have ex- expectations, but I do have joyful expectancy. Like I sit there and just like joyfully, like, you know, I think of like a pregnant woman and just like, oh, I'm just joyfully expecting whatever comes to me, comes to me, you know, my divine birthright. 
What I also brought back though, too, because the, the goddess energy, like total dragon energy, loved it. But I also brought back the serpent energy and talking about like getting over the fear and having courage, like not knowing what will happen after that. I feel like to me that that's what the courage is. And um, I started like, you know, taking shamanic Reiki clients. Like before I would just kind of do it on friends and family and animals and stuff like that. But I felt like I've had courage in this, in the sense of like, okay, I'm doing it as a business now. Sex, feeling safe and beautiful in my body with that. I am tapping into that goddess energy all the time. Like <laughs> I feel like, a sensual being now, which also propelled me to like the divine woman awakening course. Like I, I had it in the back of my head, but I'm like, I'm doing it. And I, it just feels so right for me and my body and where I'm at in life that, and just elementally, you know, with the Celtic wheel and just, I'm like, Oh, this is, I, I, I know this is where I'm supposed to be. I know I'm supposed to be with you women. I know I'm supposed to be doing this path, but I felt like all of that is from you guys. Like behind me, pushing me forward, you know, and giving me the courage to do all these things. So thank you. (laughs) Oh my gosh, love. Thank you for sharing all of that. Like that is absolutely incredible. Like so, so beautiful. And I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I love that piece. I love that piece. (laughs) So So Heather, would you like to share what you feel you brought home? Yes. So my intention for this trip was to enhance my intuition and mediumship. And I noticed not only was I getting full body chills all the time, which I do, but like when we were doing ceremony or there were a couple of times too, because of my knees, I did choose to stay back. And one of them was when I was in the little cafe and getting coffee and I noticed at the beginning today, I started rocking, like when we were talking and I was like, you're rocking, be still. (laughs) But we were in this rhythm together and we were like riding this wave. And a lot of times we might rock like this. And sometimes I go back and forth. Well, I was sitting there and while the girls were, were going up, I don't remember where it is exactly what you were going up. Where was it, Amanda? Okay. across. Yeah, that's what it was. Okay. I just started like rocking and I felt like a little woozy and I was like, oh, they're doing something. They're doing a ceremony. And sure, I didn't know what you were going to do up there. I could feel it. And if if you would have told me earlier that I was going to be able to feel something that my sisters were doing, I would have gone, I don't know if I have that ability. Well, apparently I do. And we all do, of course, but rocking and just like in, in the same motion. And um, our lovely tour guide in Santorini, she was just precious. Both of them were. But I remember talking to her. She was a beautiful young girl. And I just was like, I don't know if I should tell her this or not. But I got a flash in my head like, she's going to have two little boys. And I said, I see you with two little boys. And she was like, oh, my God, I want two boys. And I was like, yes, here comes the intuition. And it was just like flowing through me. I'm still learning how to tell what's like my ego and then like what the intuition is. I'm still learning to feel the difference. But like I knew she's going to have two boys. I just knew it. And so that's something very powerful. And also, you know, we did call in the dragon energy. And my dragon's name is Ixabnador. And she's precious. And she's so sweet, but she looks scary. And she's so not, and she has red eyes. And I knew that Lisa's dragon had green eyes. And Lisa was like, yeah. I said green or yellow. And she was like, yes. And so our dragons are like besties. And like a lot of times when we were in the bus or doing things, I could see them in my mind, like flying on each side of us alongside the bus, like protecting us. And my dragon, when I was walking up Pan's Cave, I walked up so quickly and easily. And my dragon was pulling me like this. And I knew it. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is so powerful. And I still talk to her. She will always be with me. She is me. And I am so thankful, Amanda, for you for, you know, teaching us this and showing us this way. And I just can't wait to see what happens in the next several months because, you know, this is just the the beginning. And 
you know, over the next year, how we're all going to blossom. I, you know, I can't wait to see it because, you know, all the good things that all of you are sharing, I know that it's going to be even better in two months, in four months, in eight months. So I'm just so grateful that I took this trip. And, you know, if anyone has any reservations, don't say yes. Say yes to Greece. Say yes to Amanda. Yes is the word for all of this. Oh, thank you, my love. Oh, my gosh. And so powerful and s- such wise words flowing through you. And I love that you're dragging just like, I got you. Come on, I'll get you up. Escape. That's amazing. Amazing. And you're so right, because there is such an integration period. And it's like the initial, but then like if we had this conversation in two months, like what would come through? And then when we have this conversation in a year, you know, so you're so right. And that's why it is so beautiful to kind of journal that that journey as well. So thank you, Heather. I just wanted to add something real quick in case I need to hop off. Um, What Heather was saying, if you even are questioning, just say yes. And I know that like, as we talk about all this stuff, you know, some of us have been around a while and, but there's a few that come on these retreats that have never done anything like it before. And so if you've never done anything like it before, don't be afraid to, to say yes, because one of the gifts, Amanda, that you have that is so amazing to me is you can always meet people where they're at. And, you know, even like, you know, one of my friends who came didn't even want to know what I'm like, well, here's the itinerary. This is what we're going to Nope, Don't want to know. Don't want to know. So she came in like completely in the dark, had no idea what to expect. And it was a life-changing experience for her. You know, so whether you're, you know, you feel like you don't belong, you belong, you belong. If you want to say yes, do not hesitate because it will be life changing. So I just wanted to share that Um, you don't have to have experience to be on something like this. If you're if you're there, you're meant to be there and it will be life changing. Thank you. you. Love love you too. Thank you. And Jose, would you like to share your kind of take home with us, love? Yeah, I think what what I was mentioning earlier, like the sense of empowerment is probably the biggest one. But something else um, also I felt was tremendously healing is um, that I shared when we did the, the crowning ceremony is it feels very unsafe for me to go into a group of people where I don't. I mean, I knew you, Amanda, but I didn't really know anyone else. And um, I did not feel unsafe just even once, like, and normally I do. So just that to me was like tremendously healing. And um, I take that with me because it kind of like, it just shows me that sometimes it's, just a matter of finding your tribe and it's okay sometimes to not to feel a little unsafe because they're not your people and that's okay but knowing that you have a tribe out there and soul sisters it's just very precious so that's something else that I feel I thank you my love thank you thank you so beautiful And Alicia, would you like to share with us as well, love? Yes, I mean, kind of resonating with what everyone said regarding that feeling immediately. My luggage didn't come. Aaron came up to me and I didn't know Aaron. I only knew Lisa. I didn't even know you, Amanda. And I said yes, because I felt that deep calling. And Aaron's like, I bought this dress. It's for you. And that dress, when I put it on, I felt like a goddess. Up until then, I didn't know what that feeling was. I always felt like I, you know, the masculine side of me was so strong and that divine feminine and that beauty, the joy, the gratitude, the unconditional love, feeling that, feeling like I knew everyone, even though I didn't know anybody before this trip, those connections, that relationship, the deep conversations and being able to have those. It's just, it was an incredible, incredible experience filled with so much joy, bringing back to my practice so much unconditional love and perspective when life happens, just shifting to that different perspective, like Robin mentioned, the knowing and being in the divine flow and that I don't have to control anything. It's, it's all, it's always working out for the highest and best. And just being able to be in that connection and feeling the unconditional love, sharing it with everybody that I meet every single day. 
my husband said when I got I was like, I just realized how beautiful you are. And he didn't need external outer beauty. He saw that radiant and then beauty. And I was like, wow, life changing. Oh, thank you, Alicia. Love. Thank you for sharing. Thank you, all of you, for being present, for saying yes. All the magic and beauty and wisdom and light and courage and everything that you brought, like all of you brought unique, beautiful gifts that made the journey so special with our intentions and our collective energy. So, so beautiful. So I just want to say thank you and thank you for taking time today. And, you know, our intention is, you know, that by us sharing our stories that hopefully you can activate that in others and inspire others. Thank you, my loves, for being here. What an honor it was to hear from all these beautiful, beautiful women goddesses that are just speaking from their heart and their soul and open and vulnerable about their experiences. And so like our intention is us sharing our experiences with you, invite you into something deeper, invite you to heal and know that you deserve this and that you can experience this too. And you can receive these activations when we come together collectively and we are willing to say yes and willing to keep on saying yes. And even when it's uncomfortable and the fear is up, but when we just keep moving through that, how profoundly powerful that can be. Such an honor to have this conversation. And I would love to hear from you. We would love to hear from you. Was there anything that shared from these beautiful women from their experiences that brought up something for you that gave you a healing or an activation or a story, similar story that you would like to share when we go with intention and we're with our sisters or we go and be on these powerful sites, this powerful land with an open heart and an openness to the beautiful magic that can happen once we're open to it. Thank you for being here and for being part of our beautiful community. We'd love to hear from you.